start this session with Pablo Musset. Pablo Musset received the electrical engineering degree from Universidad de la República here in 1999 and the PhD in applied mathematics from Ecole Normale Supérieure Cachan in France in 2004. From 2005 and 2006, sorry, he was a senior researcher with Cognitech in Pasadena, California, where he worked in computer vision and image processing applications. In 2006 and 2007, he was a postdoctoral scholar with the Seismology, Seismological Laboratory in California Institute of Technology, Pasadena, working on remote sensing using optical imaging, radar, and GPS networks. Since 2008, he has been with the Division of Electrical Engineering here at the Universidad de la República, where he's in currently in a full professor of signal processing. His research, research interests include machine learning, image restoration, and image analysis, computational photography, and remote sensing. Please welcome Pablo. Hi. Thank you. Uh, I'm very happy to be here, and I can't. Uh, 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 I would like to say thanks to my colleagues with whom I organize this this event. Uh, I think everybody's happy uh, up to now, so it's perfect. So before starting with my presentation, I'm gonna say a few words about the department where we work because. Because of, of, of schedule problems, we, we couldn't present uh, yet. So, uh, we are at the signal processing department uh, within the Instituto of uh, the Ingeniería Eléctrica at Facultad de Ingeniería here. Uh, this is where we are now, and our uh, department is here. So, if you want to stop by, uh, uh, we are, you're welcome. Uh, in this institute, uh, we are uh, five departments, uh, power system, telecommunication, controls and system, electronics, and signal processing. And uh, we work on many different things. It's a pretty large uh, institute. So, uh, But we people in, uh, in signal processing, we work mainly on image processing, on biomedicine, on audio processing, and on machine learning. Um, now, our department uh, is composed by 20 professors. We have 9 PhD and 5 masters. Uh, this is, the, this is the, the applications we work on. Signal processing, audio, image, video, pattern recognition, deep learning, computer vision, information theory. And uh, the application fields are uh, typically uh, ag uh, agriculture, biomedicine, Anomaly detection, energy, uh, music, remote sensing, uh, digital restoration, and some others. Uh, it, our group has been existed for existing for 20 years, and uh, we are very happy to have a lot of collaborations abroad, mainly in France and in the U.S. One of our collaborators is, is here, Guillermo Sapiro. And just to show a few applications uh, classified by subject, so image processing and machine learning, uh, these are so applications to agriculture, uh, medicine. Uh, here is a problem of identifying polyps in virtual colonoscopy or classifying um, melanoma in melanocytic lesions. In audio processing, to do classification of kind of uh, music of different families of of, of players uh, playing uh, a, a, a kind of autochthon music. We also work on anom anomaly detection with applications to energy consumption to detect fraud and also to detect fraud in, uh, in communication networks. Another area is uh, deep learning and reinforcement learning. So we work on applications, kind of disentangling, uh, video deep learning, uh, sound analysis uh, to do scene classification, which makes sound images, and more theoretical foundations like uh, metric learning, just to give a few examples. We also work a lot on, on image and video restoration. Well, this is 
particularly in my field. We work on text. Well, you have uh, maybe the ones who went to the hackathon have seen this. This is to do text restoration from archives. We have also video restoration and applications to genetics and uh, fluorescence microscopy. So uh, this is a web page. So if you want more information, you can go there. So. Eh? Ah. Como, como hago? Ah. Okay, so my talk is about modeling images. Natural images is a little bit uh, ambitious. So let's say images, uh, model the space of images, and uh, it's, most, it's, most, it's mainly an his historic view uh, across an application we work uh, a lot here, which is image, re image restoration. So we're gonna see how the image models can be fit into, can be fed into uh, an image restoration method, and we will see with this uh, excuse, we're gonna see the evolution of image models, a historic evolution. So I'm gonna start by presenting some, some common problems in image restoration. So uh, this is denoising, this is the most explored problem, and people are still working a lot on this problem. Uh, so whether you have uh, medical images or satellite images or astronomic, astronomical images, or photography, images always contain noise because of the acquisition process, which is usually it's a counting process, so there's a Poisson process there. And also there are other kind of noises uh, such as thermal noise, which is modeled like Gaussian, as, as a Gaussian noise. So in order to retrieve what we would like to measure from what uh, really captures the device, we, we need to remove that noise. This is another uh, real image from uh, fluorescence micro microscopy. In fluorescence micro microscopy, to to have a good focus is really is a really difficult is really difficult to to adjust. So, this is the kind of images we have: these blurry images, and we need to deblur them or deconvolve them. So for that, we can use, for example, the information about the acquisition device, about the microscope. This is a very classic problem, which is tomography. In tomography, the goal is to reconstruct the image from a set of Fourier coefficients, a, a sparse set of Fourier, co Fourier coefficients. This is another, and, and there's noise involved too, though, so this is another restoration problem. Another problem, which is very important, but it's usually not, not as much, much addressed as the other ones, is uh, image decompression in the presence of noise. So this is very important in satellite imaging. So the problem is, is, uh, is that we have an image which is contaminated by noise, and then the image is compressed. So I don't know if we managed to see this. This is the, the residual between the original image and the, w the one which is noisy and compressed. And maybe you can see some structure. It's not pure white noise. This is assumed here. So what happens is when the noise is, is such that makes a wavelet coefficient of the original image jump from a quantization interval to another, then we have like these small wavelets-like shapes that appear. But if the image is, already, is, is very large already and all coefficients start jumping, what we have is a kind of white noise. And the challenge here is that the noise varies within the image because this, this compression doesn't, uh, doesn't give the same number of, of bytes to each region. So this factor of the quantization over the noise varies within the image. So this, is this image contrasted in order to see 
better what is the effect of noise and quantization. So they are intertwined, and that makes the problem a little bit difficult. Another uh, problem, classic in image processing, and in mo uh, actually in image editing, is in painting, but there are many other ones. In painting is a problem where we want to substitute a region of the image by, by another region while looking still realistic. So this is a work by some friends. So the goal here, as you see, is to erase the guy who's dancing there. So all these problems that I'm, uh, I just showed can be modeled in this way. Sometimes this operator, most of the time, this operator is linear, but it doesn't need to be linear. So variables are like this. So we have this ori the original image we want to retrieve. We have a degradation opera operator. And then we have some edited noise. And all this gives the observation. So for example, if this is the original image, this is what we would like with the, uh, yeah, that what, would, uh, what we would see in a noisy image, in a blurry image. And this is another degradation, which is uh, studied a lot, which is missing pixels. So the goal is, if I give you this, recover this. So uh, let's begin with this inverse problem. So the most simple thing, the first thing that comes to mind uh, is to compute to infer the, 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 the to do estimate the original image via least squares, okay? And this is what happens. The problem here is is the, uh, this, this uh, these inverse problems are imposed. Otherwise, the problem wouldn't be very interesting. So, when you compute the pseudo in pseudo inverse, you are dividing by zero. Let's say because of the uh, these eigenvalues that are that are zero, close to zero. So another possibility is do Tikhonov regularization, which is a very simple thing that you've already seen, I, I guess, in, in, in numerical calculus. So it's just the idea is just that we add a small regularization here. And this, then when we invert the matrix, everything goes well. So this happens because we added a planarization on the norm of the solution. Another way to tackle the problem is using Bayesian formalism. And uh, this slide is just to show that these approaches in imaging have been used from a for a long time. And these are one of the first these are some of the first papers on the on the top. So uh, this one is from 1972, this is from 1977, so we're talking about something like 50 years old problem. So this is another way of approaching the problem, but you will see that actually this one and the previous one are, are linked. So in Bayesian uh, formalism, the idea is the following one. We consider now that u is a realization of a random variable, capital U, with a, some probability distribution p of u. So this would be what we call the, uh, the prior distribution of the image we want to restore. Then we have noise, which is random. We have our operator A. And V is our observation. So everything is random here, except from the operator, the degradation, which we assume that we know. So then we can write the posterior distribution. This models the degradation. So it's how, uh, how looks the, the image V given the image U. So this is usually what, to, in order to do this, to write this, we, we do a physical modeling of the devi acquisition device. And then once we have this, we have two possibilities. Actually, we have more than two possibilities, but usually we use one of these two. So the the first one is trying to look for uh, 
you that that maximizes this distribution. So which is the most prob probable u given that I observe d? This is called maximum a posteriori. The other uh, um, the other quantity that makes sense is to use the minimum mean square error, which is actually the uh, the posterior mean, which is the same as the expectation of u given v, given an observed v. The so now we have here we have a maximization problem, and here we have to compute an integral over the density. So each of them has its uh, advantages and drawbacks. So as I told you, there's a, there's a link between both uh, formulations, actually. If we compute the map estimator, we can write it this way. So uh, we take the minus log and these two things sp split. And we have a minimization problem. When we have this term, this is my log, my minus log of p of v given u, which is called the data fidelity term. And then we have this term here, which is the minus log of the prior. So this looks like the, the examples we've, we've already seen with uh, least squares. And uh, an example of this is, let's say, we take n, the noise to be Gaussian, and we have a prior, uh, which is e minus lambda r of u. This problem writes like this. And this, if we, we don't put anything here, it would be the least square solution that we know that since u a is ill post won't work. And this is the kind of regularization we show, we, we, we select. In the case of Tikhonov, this was lambda times the L2 norm squared of u. So everything is nice here, but this is the real problem. So how to choose P of u? Because the data fit term is, a, is basically is physical modeling. P of u is the up the prior on the space of images and we think usually people who work in image processing we we think of of this uh, space of images as a manifold embedded in a very high dimensional space and choosing a prior on on the image means adding some uncertainty which is defined on this manifold of images so Images have millions of pixels, so you can. So this this space is huge, and the structure of the manifold is really complicated. So the images are beautiful, but they are very complex structures. So now I'm going to talk about global image models, and let's start simple. So the, these early models from the 70s consist, for example, in using Gaussian priors. This was very typical. In the case of Gaussians, the, if, the, if the noise is also Gaussian, the map is the same as, as the mean squared error of the reconstruction. So, and this has a, these are two Gaussians, a product of Gaussians, so we have an explicit formula for the, the estimator, which writes like this. But if you think of that, this, this model is, is, is too simple. Images are too complicated to be modeled like for, like a, uh, by a Gaussian distribution. So it doesn't make much sense. Th these models are actually very good when they act locally. So you can approximate an image locally by a Gaussian or eventually by a mixture of Gaussians, but you cannot choose a, a single Gaussian to model the whole image. So another approach to be more local uh, that was used a lot, uh, and this was a very important paper by Giman and Giman. What you use Markov random fields, because by means of this Gibbs prior, we can select clicks and and do local and, and model local dependencies that then, by the Markov property, they they 
repercute to, to the rest of the image. The problem with this is, on one side, that the computation of the map is is really computer co computer intense computational intensity because we used to we need to do sampling met methods in these spaces using, for instance, metropolis. So the convergence is slow. The other problem too is that okay, this is a much is a little bit richer model, but still it's too simple to model images. So uh, at this point, many people were obsessed, many mathematicians in the image processing field were obsessed in trying to, in trying to uh, find the proper space, the proper functional space to represent images. So I'm going to show a small evolution on that field. The first one is simply to take the Tikhonov regularization on the gradient of the image. And this is what we get. So the image looks blurry. It's not very good. And this is basically because we are strongly penalizing gradients. So this is what makes it blurs the edges. It's fine to, to, to denoise some parts in the flat parts, but it uh, uh, destroys edges, and it will also destroy textures. Then, then, then in 92, there was a very uh, important paper by Rudin, Osher, and Fatimi, uh, where the idea was to use a L2 da data fit term. This, this, is, uh, this corresponds to a Gaussian noise prior. Yes, to a Gaussian noise, uh, sorry, and and to use total variation, the total variation of the image as a regularizer. This is the results we have. So this is much better because we preserve edges, but it looks uh, too much like a cartoon. It still destroys textures, and this is not really what images look like. No? Another line of research was using wavelets and that means transforming the image to another domain and in these wavelet domains the representation becomes sparse so the regularization could be applying u a wavelet decomposition and then use the norm l1 which gives sparse representations so this is uh, also a very famous paper by donahoe and johnstone and this is the result so you see it's still looks it still looks a little bit noisy so then then there was another model which i find i find it really really interesting that was when we are now in the year two th in the year 2000 and and may have proposed this kind of decomposition which is the idea is the following we, we, we can think of images as uh, piecewise smooth functions and superimpose to these images some an image of texture. So structure and texture. So what we he proposed is to write a term which would be so here f sorry the notation is not consistent. F is the image, u would be what we will rec what we would recover after restoration as the cartoon and v as the texture. So the idea is to define two terms here, one related to the cartoon image and the other to the texture image, so that we can decompose the image in these two images. Uh, U and V live in different functional spaces. For example, the total variation would be a good characterization for the cartoon-like image, as we already saw, and then something which captures more the oscillations would be a good representation for the texture. So these are the, 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 this idea was by Meyer, but there were a lot of papers on this, on this topic. And here you can see all the possible combinations of norms for the cartoon and norms from the, and norm for the, the texture. So this is, this is the result we get. So you see there's a good separation. Sorry. 
So we see there's, there's a good separation between texture and uh, structure. So now I come back to this uh, story of the map and the posterior mean. We usually use map, uh, those working in variational problems. But actually, if you look at this distribution, what do you think is a better characterization if you have to summarize everything with one value? The map or the, on the, or the conditional expectation of the posterior? I would think, uh, I would think the map, the, 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 the mean posterior is a better representation here. As I said before, these approaches go by different ways. Finding the maxima posterior has to do with a, an optimization procedure, and finding the MMSE has to do with computing integrals in very high di dimensional spaces. So let's see what happens when we replace the map by the posterior mean. So we have this integral here over the image space, n is the number of pixels. And this is the conditional expectation of u given the observation v. There's a, a very nice work by Luchet and Moisson and later by Abergel and Moisson, uh, which consists in taking the uh, TVL2 model by by Osher and uh, by Rudin Osher and Fatimi, and instead of finding the maximum a posteriori, finding the uh, MMSE. These are two versions of the method. Uh, the, the, the one here used to compute this expectation by doing sampling, uh, MCMC sampling. The conversion was very slow. Then they came up with a method, which is very very clever method, which were each pixel is updated uh, one at a time, and it's updated by conditioning to the rest of the pixels in the image. So that way, it's a sequence of computations of one-dimensional integrals. So it becomes a lot, uh, much more tractable. So this is uh, the kind of result we get when we replace the map which would be this. This would be the classical restoration using the rudin osher fatimi approach. And this would be when we replace the map here by the mean. So you see this is a much better restoration. It removes noise, and it keeps the, stru the structure much more than the, the classic map approach. I, I talk about global uh, models for images. Now I'm going to jump to what people do more now, which is modeling images locally using patches. So little squares of images within the image. So this is what patch-based, the, the fundamental idea of patch-based method is to restrict the, restora the restoration problem to a patch. And then to apply the, su the subpart of the degradation operator to that patch. So it's the same, more or less the same problem, but now we're working on small images. If you remember, I told you that choosing global priors was very difficult. And saying that an image is, follows a Gaussian distribution is, 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 too, is too much a simple model to be realistic. But if we restrict ourselves to small images, then the things, things may work. So this is what happens here. So we're going to work on these very small problems. and. The method, the idea would be we extract patches, and we can now see these patches in a space of, of dimension, the number, the, the size of the patch. So we are replacing, so you see the idea, we are replacing a, an image, which let's say a single image in dimension uh, 1 million, by 1 million small images in dimension, let's say 10 by 10, 100. Okay? So it's a very redundant representation, but redundancy is very good when we want to do restoration. So if we plot these uh, patches in, an, in, in the image space, in the patch image space, we would see, hopefully, we would see clusters that would correspond to patches which are similar one to each other. And images have a very strong property, which is subsimilarity. 
if we have an edge, if you follow, if you follow this edge there, you can take many pictures at many patches at different places, and they all look th the same. So this self-similarity property is very important with, because it, it, is, it is what makes this method work. So one can think of this as a set of clusters, let's say normals, with some priors, and this would be the uh, now we, this would be the image model for the problem we want to solve. So what kind of priors now we use for the space in the space of patches? One could be just use a Gaussian for each cluster, so for each set of patches which are similar uh, one with each other. And if we do so, when we have a Gaussian noise, we have also we we, already, we have this explicit formula for the uh, map estimator, which is also the MMSE in this case. We could use something a little bit more sophisticated. We would be using Gaussian priors. Uh, sorry, uh, using mixtures of Gaussians. It's a little bit difficult, but it, sti it still can be computed very efficiently. So now the problem is how to estimate the mean and the covariance of each cluster. So there are different ways of, ways of doing this. One, uh, one method to do this is Gaussian models, using Gaussian models as, as a prior. This, this is, there's a very good denoising method, which is called non-local base. We could use something more sophisticated, which are mixtures of ga Gaussians, and then there are two kinds of strategies there. One consists in modeling this uh, mixture of Gaussians using external images. So we take a database of, let's say, 200 images, we extract the patches, and then we try to approximate the clusters by mixtures of Gaussians. There's another line of work which consists in learning the priors from the image itself. The idea is that we have many similar patches, many patches which are similar, so we can still work. If we, if we take the, if you take the mean of them, they would, that would remove the noise and preserve the structure. So that's why we can work with degraded images and the, this, this piecewise linear estimation, for, for example, by you and Sapiro is one is, is a very nice method to do so. And there are other more complicated approaches. The problem of this is that in order to estimate the covariance matrix. There's an issue there because we have the curse of dimensionality. The, the matrix is too large for, compared to numbers of observations we have. So we usually have uh, il, il, these matrices tend to be ill-conditioned, and to do the restoration, we, do, we need to compute inverses. So there we have a problem. But there are some workarounds that I won't discuss here. So this is, what, uh, this is the progress uh, in, in image restoration. So we have, this is the original image a noisy image with Gaussian noise. This is wavelet denoising. You see like little structures here, 92. Uh, NL, NL base, 2003, it looks much better. Uh, this is another method, you see it becomes a little bit, it, NL base destroys the textures here but here, you see that it preserves better the texture. So now, but and this method is, is very recent, it's from last year, so there's a progress there, but now it came the neural network. So what is a neural network? A convolutional neural network is just a function, a parametric function of many parameters from an input to an output. If you have a set, if we have a set of n independent uh, random variables, we use uh, these training sets to minimize this. Sorry. And what is this? This is just the conditional expectation given the observation. So there we have the other estimator. So let me show some progress in this field. So this was the noisy image. This was the best denoiser we had at, uh, from the ones I showed here. And these are denoisers uh, by convolutional neural network. So you see the results are, are much better. There are still some problems because the texture here is better preserved 
than the one here. So it's not perfect, but it's doing quite good. I'm going to jump this. This is a method uh, to denoise videos. So uh, I'm going to talk about two approaches here uh, for uh, uh, neural network approaches. One of them, which is very popular, is called plug and play methods. The idea is to use, to decompose the problem using a variable splitting optimization technique like ADMM, for example. In that way, we can separate using a slack variable, we can separate a minimization in U and a minimization in, in, in the other variable, in the, in the dual variable, and uh, with while maintaining the other one fixed. So this is, this is pretty easy to do. And the assumption here is that this proximal operator will be replaced by a convolutional neural network. So the assumption here is that there is a, a neural network such that it is the proximal operator or the gradient of the regularization functional. And this is not true m most of the cases. There are some conversion analysis for this. But still, there are some ways of modifying this as it is proposed in Rue to make the conditions uh, be accomplished. This is an example for the joint denoising and the compression I, I, uh, problem I mentioned you a few slides ago. So you see the results are, are pretty good. Then there's another whole of, there's another family uh, of methods which consist on using implicit priors using generative models like uh, GANs or, or VAEs. Um, there, for example, the, the, the approach here is to compute the latent variable Z by optimizing this function here and here G of Z is the gener generative model, for example, with a GAN. So there's a prior here, the, 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 let's say a prior which is defined on the data fit term. So it's like a geometric prior. This is very difficult to optimize. It gives a map estimator of this form. This is highly non-convex, and we don't have uh, guarantees of, uh, uh, of convergence. Usually it gets stuck in log and minima. So I'm going to describe this method. This is a method that uh, Mario Gonzalez is working on, on his uh, PhD thesis, and he had a poster today on that. But the idea is to optimize jointly in the image space and in the latent space. And then we get a much more simple formulation, and we have convergence guarantees. So I'm going to show some results comparing the two approaches. So this is for the problem of in-painting. This, this is the data. This is the noise. This is, sorry, this is the the some pixels that we keep, 20% of the pixels. And then this is what restores the algorithm, uh, the first one I showed by Bora. This is what we get. And this would be the perfect reconstruction using encoder decoder. And this is same for compressed sensing. So this is Bora, and this is SARS. And this is uh, encoding decoding. So this is a compar comparison of MSC versus of our method versus the previous one. And there you see that we do much better. Uh, so I'm, I'm finishing here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pablo. Uh, we started late. We are running a bit late. We have time for half a question. Any question for Pablo? Perfect. So my <laughs> talk was really clear. Huh? Very good talk. No question. Excellent talk. Okay. Thank you, Pablo. Let's thank, thank Pablo you. again.